This is Wrestling's Greatest Moments. Hey now, wrestling fans. It's time for another episode of Wrestling's Greatest Moments. Wrestling fans have seen some brutal bouts, but few compare to 1985's I Quit Cage match between Magnum TA and Tully Blanchard. Sit back as Wrestling's Greatest Moments looks at Magnum TA versus Tully Blanchard, The Road to I Quit. We'll look at who gave Magnum TA his legendary nickname, the big risk Magnum took jumping to Jim Crockett Promotions, how Tully Blanchard searched for his perfect 10, blood him the baby doll, and the wild feud that led to one of wrestling's legendary cage matches. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Born to be a heel, second generation wrestler Tully Blanchard was the son of beloved babyface wrestler Joe Blanchard. Tully began working as a referee in his father Southwest Championship Wrestling promotion before becoming an active competitor. Although Blanchard looked the part of a babyface and had the pedigree, he gravitated towards villainy. This was seen when he worked in his father's promotion alongside Gino Hernandez as the original dynamic duo. Hernandez would form a new version of the duo with Chris Adams at World Class Championship Wrestling. Dynamic Dynamic duo were a constant threat to babyface teams such as Scott Casey and Tiger Conway Jr., Chavo Guerrero and Manny Fernandez, and Dos Caras and Mil Mascaras. The two would hold the promotion Southwest Tag Team Championship multiple times before Blanchard turned on Hernandez, sparking an intense rivalry. Tully was already over as a heel when he entered Jim Crockett Promotions, aka Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling, but he would take things to the next level there. Announcer Bob Connell recognized what made Blanchard stand out as a heel. They could really hate Tully. It wasn't his size. He was a good talker, and he was good at getting on the crowd. I think the fact he was such a good worker was the thing that really made it for him. Blanchard took an interesting approach to wrestling, claiming he'd act like a babyface out of the ring, and even in the ring, that is, until he started losing. Once an opponent got the upper hand, Blanchard relied on winning by whatever means were necessary. It was a reliable formula for him and helped elevate Blanchard in the mid-Atlantic region. Enter the perfect 10. Another thing that helped elevate Blanchard was the presence of his valet Baby Doll, aka Nicola Roberts. Like Tully, Baby Doll was born into the wrestling business, inspired to wrestle. However, standing at 5 feet 10 inches tall, she felt her chances were limited and she didn't want to put over smaller opponents. That changed when she happened to learn that World Class Championship Wrestling star Gino Hernandez was, was looking for someone to play his bodyguard. Baby Doll, who had a crush on Hernandez, landed the job, but landing Gino's heart proved impossible as she claims he had a younger girlfriend who came from a wealthy family. She worked in world class as Andrea the Giant before her time in world class began to wind down. Blanchard recalls meeting the future baby doll during a campaign in championship wrestling from Florida. When he saw her, he knew he found his perfect partner in crime. According to Baby Doll, she was working some dates in Florida when she spoke with wrestler slash booker Michael Hayes. Unfortunately, they were getting slow and closing down for the winter, but it was my good fortune that Dusty and Tully were there. Michael said to go ask Dusty since the Carolinas were getting hot and he would treat me right. I asked Dusty if he could use me. Each night I worked, Dusty and Tully both stood out and watched. Three weeks later, I was in Charlotte being Tully's perfect 10. At the time, Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling was running a contest for Blanchard to find his perfect 10, or dime piece in today's vernacular. The woman would serve as his valet, which as wrestling fans know, would likely involve occasional interference on her part. Blanchard talked about what made Roberts the right choice. She was a different dynamic. For me to go out there and talk about the perfect 10, it was monster heat. If I had walked in there with some bombshell, it wouldn't have had the same effect. It was just the right place, the right time, the right everything. Baby Doll added to Blanchard's already impressive portrayal of a heel. At the time, Tully was feuding with the American Dream Dusty Rhodes. However, a new opponent was being prepared for him, a young star by the name of Terry Allen, better known as Magnum TA. Magnum TA is born. For Terry Allen, Hard work was the only path to success. He learned this when he began wrestling as a high school freshman and lost every match but one. Through training and hard work, he became Virginia's private school champion and pinned everyone in a state tournament in his senior year. As far as Allen is concerned, you don't wake up and win the lottery and become successful. You've got to do everything in steps in a building block process to obtain goals. So you set short-term and long-term goals so you can feel like you're making progress throughout that process, no matter how painful and agonizing it might be. I really had no idea that I was going to have to put it into practice in the biggest challenge of my life. Terry Allen began wrestling as a pro when he was 19. As was custom for most wrestlers of that era, he mastered his craft as he worked from one territory to another, just as he'd set up a long-term plan for succeeding in amateur wrestling 
wrestling, he also had a plan for the pro ranks. I wanted to be the best wrestling tactician class brawler who was in shape that anybody had ever seen. That was my goal. I had a personal goal to every night make believers out of everybody in that building. According to Allen, he first met Andre the Giant when he chauffeured Andre during Andre's tour in the NWA Pacific Northwest Territory. Fast forward two years later, and Allen was beginning to find success in championship wrestling from Florida ran into the eighth wonder of the world again. As Allen told the flagship, while in Florida, Andre says to me, you're ready boss, do something big, but you need a name, you need a handle. That's exactly what he called it, a handle. Andre said, you look like that guy on TV, you should be Magnum TA. It sounded great. I didn't know what I was going to do with it, and he was going back to Vince Sr. to tell him about me to pitch it and have me come up there and work for them. Fate intervened, and Bill Watts invited Allen to work in Mid-South Wrestling after Paul Orndorff bolted for the WWF. Just one of many wrestlers who ditched their wrestling homes for Titanland. There, Magnum found success, main eventing, and according to him, making six figures for the first time in my wrestling career. Once again, Magnum found a job vacancy after a wrestler left a promotion for the WWF. And to be fair, Promotions were losing talent so fast to the WWF that the AWA and various NWA territories didn't know what hit them. In this case, Jim Crockett promotion star Barry Windham bolted north where he reunited with championship wrestling from Florida partner Mike Rotundo as the U.S. Express. Magnum had a reunion of his own as Dusty Rhodes was now booking Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling. Dusty knew what Magnum brought with him and Magnum's success in Mid-South Wrestling further confirmed this. Allen epitomized what promoters look for in babyfaces. Good-looking wrestlers who could attract female fans while portraying double-tough heroes who male fans could respect. The jump to Jim Crockett promotions was a calculated risk. Magnum recalls promoter Jim Crockett Jr. bluntly telling him he couldn't match the lucrative pay he enjoyed in Mid-South Wrestling. I can't guarantee you that money today. I can guarantee you'll make half of that to start. It won't give you the biggest push anybody can ever want to get. Although Magnum took an initial pay cut in Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling, his career quickly took off. Magnum debuted in 1984, feuding with veteran Chief Wahoo McDaniel over McDaniel's United States Championship. McDaniel, a longtime babyface, had turned heel, shocking the fans after years battling the territory's greatest villains. Although McDaniel had the experience edge and was still tough as nails, Magnum eventually defeated him, capturing the United States title March 23, 1985. Lighting the Fuse Road to Starcade 85 was full of twists and turns. While the Magnum vs. Tully feud would heat up once Blanchard chased Magnum for the United States Championship, the two men had battled each other earlier in the year during Blanchard's TV title reign. Indeed, the two grapplers had met when Magnum worked in Joe Blanchard's Southwest Championship Wrestling. Magnum had come close to winning the TV title, but always came up short. From there, the two wrestlers' careers split for several months, as Magnum chased Wahoo McDaniel for the United States Championship, and Tully did his best to throw back Dusty Rhodes' challenge for the NWA television title. Dusty ended Blanchard's incredible 353-day title reign on March 16, 1985. But the feud was just getting warmed up. The belt was upgraded to the NWA World Television Championship, a sign of Jim Crockett promotions going national. On April 28, 1985, Blanchard regained the belt, which was the usual course of action, as bookers typically followed the belief that there's more money in a babyface chasing for the title rather than a babyface holding it. Dusty eventually regained the title at the Great American Bash on July 6, 1985. For more about the bash, check out our video, How Great Was the Great American Bash? Magnum was busy defending his U.S. title while also shooting for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship held by Nature Boy Ric Flair. Thanks to his status as U.S. Champion, Magnum was the number one contender for Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling. However, a new challenge was coming as Tully Blanchard turned his attention to Dusty Rhodes to Magnum TA. The fuse was lit, and things would explode at Starcade 85. Join us in part two, where we look at the events leading up to Starcade 85's I Quit Steel Cage match and the brutal bout that took place there. Do you remember Magnum TA and Tully Blanchard's feud? If so, what did you think of it? Share your thoughts in the comments section, and let us know if there's any videos you'd like wrestling's greatest moments to cover. In the meantime, subscribe to our channel, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and spread the good news about wrestling's greatest moment, the channel that celebrates the squared circle.